On May 14, 2025, something extraordinary happened. A blazing burst of energy erupted from the surface of the sun, a powerful X2.7 class solar flare, the strongest of the year. It originated from a volatile sunspot region known as AR4 Tsar H7 and hurled intense radiation toward Earth, traveling at the speed of light. Within minutes, the effects were felt around the globe. High-frequency radio signals across Europe, Asia, and the Middle East were disrupted. Pilots lost contact, ships at sea had to improvise, and emergency communications faltered. In the blink of an eye, our highly connected world was reminded of its fragile dependence on technologies that can be silenced by the sun in an instant. This wasn't just a random flare. An X2.7 class solar flare is a significant event. To understand its power, we need to look at how solar flares are classified. The scale runs from A, B, C, M, to X, with each step representing a tenfold increase in intensity. X-class flares are the most intense of all, and the number that follows indicates just how powerful they are. So an X2.7 flare is not just in the highest class, it is 2.7 times more intense than a baseline X1.0 flare, placing it among the more potent solar events we can observe. The flare ionized Earth's upper atmosphere, particularly the D layer of the ionosphere, creating conditions that made high-frequency radio signals almost useless. Critical communication channels went down. The impact wasn't isolated. Just one day before, the same sunspot region had produced an X1.2 flare. That same morning, before the X2.7 event, it had already released an M5.3 flare. It was as if the sun was warning us, step by step, before unleashing its full force. What's particularly concerning is that while this flare didn't produce a coronal mass ejection, or CME, the kind of solar eruption capable of triggering severe geomagnetic storms, the threat isn't over. AR-4087 continues to rotate across the sun's surface, bringing it into a more direct line with Earth. And as it does, the risk of a future CME, one aimed squarely at our planet, increases dramatically. Coronal mass ejections are not just impressive solar events. They are potentially catastrophic. When a CME collides with Earth's magnetic field, it can generate geomagnetic storms powerful enough to cause electrical grid failures, damage satellites, disrupt GPS and communication systems, and even increase radiation exposure for airline passengers and astronauts. Unlike solar flares which hit us instantly, CMEs travel more slowly, often taking several hours or days to arrive. This delay offers a critical opportunity, a window in which warnings can be issued, systems can be shut down, and protective measures can be activated. But that window only matters if we're watching. Over the past few years, the sun has been anything but quiet. In 2024, we saw one of the strongest flares in decades, an X8.7 class event from sunspot region AR3664. That flare triggered a rare G5 class geomagnetic storm, the most powerful category on the scale. Brilliant auroras lit up the skies over Texas and Spain, far from their usual polar domains. At the same time, GPS systems faltered, radio communications failed, and aviation routes had to be quickly adjusted. That wasn't an isolated incident either. On February 22, 2024, an X6.3 flare erupted. Then, on October 3, a staggering X9.0 flare followed, a true monster of a solar event. Not all of these flares resulted in CMEs hitting Earth, but the sheer energy they carried was a clear sign. The sun is ramping up its activity, and we are entering a turbulent phase of the solar cycle. Now, in 2025, the story continues. The recent X2.7 flare is not a lone event. It is part of a pattern, a sequence of increasingly powerful outbursts from a star that is anything but calm. The fact that AR4087 produced multiple strong flares within a 24-hour span suggests that deeper disturbances are unfolding within the sun's surface. As this region rotates further into Earth's line of sight, the chances of a direct hit from a CME grow more likely with each passing day. That is why agencies around the world are watching closely. NASA, the European Space Agency, and NOAA's Space Weather Prediction Center are monitoring solar activity 24-7 using advanced instruments like the Solar Dynamics Observatory and the Parker Solar Probe. 
These missions don't just send back mesmerizing images. They provide essential data that helps us anticipate solar behavior, forecast dangerous events, and prepare for the consequences. Still, even with our most advanced tools, space weather forecasting remains one of science's great challenges. Not all flares produce CMEs. Not all CMEs are directed at Earth. And even when we detect them, predicting their precise timing and impact is extremely difficult. But preparation matters. Across the globe, new strategies are being developed to increase resilience. Satellites are being shielded more effectively. Power grids are being redesigned to handle sudden surges. Redundant systems are being built into GPS networks to ensure continuity during solar events. Awareness, too, is a critical part of our defense. The more people understand space weather, the more prepared we can be as a society. Pilots, especially those flying near the poles, receive special briefings when solar activity increases. Flights are rerouted to reduce exposure to radiation. Governments and private companies are beginning to invest more seriously in solar monitoring and forecasting, knowing that a major flare or CME could disrupt modern life on a global scale. The X2.7 flare of May 14, 2025, was more than just a headline. It was a reminder, a powerful sign that the sun is not just a distant light in our sky, but a living, volatile entity, one capable of affecting every aspect of our modern world, from the planes that fly above us to the devices in our hands. As we move deeper into 2025, nearing the peak of Solar Cycle 25, we must remain vigilant. The sun's activity is increasing, and so is the risk of larger, more damaging solar events. Through science, preparation, and global cooperation, we can protect the technologies we rely on and better understand the star that gives us life, and at times, reminds us just how vulnerable we really are.